from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Wednesday, October 9th. Okay, so we have the moon in Sagittarius energy going void, of course, at 1.54 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Capricorn energy at 5.39 a.m. Again, Eastern Standard Time. So let's talk about this particular transition. So when the moon is in Sag, like it's been for the last couple of days, we kind of have a new light, a new truth, a new perspective. We are building an optimism and confidence. We're renewing our soul and our spirit, our hopes, our wishes, our dreams, but we're kind of flying high. And again, kind of visualizing where it is that we would like to see ourselves end up. The problematic area is, is that a lot of those dreams, those goals, those visions aren't really rooted in reality. It's just kind of wishful thinking at this particular juncture. Having the moon shift into Capricorn energy not only knocks the wind out of our sails, not only brings us back down to earth, but it gives us a little bit of an opportunity to get logical and practical and rational with the plan that would be needed in order for us to bring the goals, the visions, the dreams that we just kind of arrived at with the moon and Sag, how we're going to bring them to life, how we're going to bring them back down to earth. Now, the Capricorn energy, typically speaking, because it is an earth energy, it kind of makes us more aware of our physical realm makes us more present in our physical form and it illuminates to us yes we have these new plans we have these new dreams but we also have a very massive to-do list of things that we need to wrap up and close the door upon before we can actively start building towards something new there is a little bit of a seriousness a somberness that takes over when the moon is in capricorn because of course saturn rules over that capricorn energy we do tend to kind of take on a little bit more of a pessimistic type of perspective, a negative Nancy type of narrative. So we definitely have to watch out for that. Now, with all of that going on, I also just want to remind you that the minute that we shift into this Capricorn energy, we're also building towards the first quarter moon that will be taking place in Capricorn energy here tomorrow on the 10th. But what we also have happening here today is Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. Jupiter is going retrograde at 21 degrees in Gemini energy. So again, there's an astral forecast for this particular event. Download your October energy guide for your zodiac sign to understand where this is impacting your life the most. We are going to be kind of unpacking a lot of different thoughts, ideas, opinions, knowledge, while Jupiter is retrograde, and again, will continue to be retrograde, carrying us all the way into 2025. So there's going to be a lot of energy shifting going on here today. Again, reminder, take a listen to this week's Ascension forecast so that you understand where the energy is going to manifest in the physical form. And just remind yourself that you're not cray cray. When things are shifting, things shift within us, illuminating where there are energy blockages for us to be working upon. I would suspect today, tomorrow, the next day, going to be highly active, energetic days. Okay, so again, the Ascension forecast will tell you where this energy is going to manifest in the physical form and what you can do about it. So stay ahead of the game. So there's definitely a lot going on here today, but it's a relatively quote unquote quiet day in the cosmos, meaning there are only nine different aspects taking place here today. And eight of those aspects that is going to involve the moon. So we kick things off at 1.54 a.m. Again, Eastern Standard Time. This is the last aspect that the moon and Sag will be making before going void, of course. And of course, if the moon is at the final degrees of the Sag energy before going void, that means that there's likely going to be an interaction with Neptune. Neptune, again, at the final degrees of his rulership in Pisces energy. Yes, he's still retrograde, but we know that, you know, any planet, any luminary nearing the final degrees of a sign is likely going to have an interaction with Neptune at the this particular juncture. Also Pluto, but that's a story for a couple of minutes from now. We have a square taking place. And of course, it's never fun to be in a square. A square means that we're highlighting the growing pains where there's tension and conflict going on here. And it's supposed to highlight where it is that we're having these growing pains so that we can kind of take a different perspective, 
different stab at it, if you will, and just see where we're resisting some of these changes. Neptune being retrograde in his rulership and Pisces energy is supposed to be showing us where it is that we cannot be looking at life through those rose colored glasses. They essentially got bitch slapped off of our face when Neptune went retrograde. We have the ability to deal with life as it is not for the way that we wished it would be. And we have the ability to wrap up certain karmic cycles, certain dreams, certain goals, certain visions that are no longer resonating with this new version of self. So the moon interacting with Neptune is definitely definitely going to put us in a funk. It's going to put us in a situation where we really don't want to deal with life. We would rather live in la la land. We would rather live in this fantasy land where nothing goes wrong. But of course, that is just prolonging the growing pains that we're currently sitting in. So we're definitely not going to be feeling ourselves. We're not going to be in alignment with our intuition. We're really not gaining good idea, good clarity of what's going on here. Everything is over exaggerated. Everything has an element of delusion illusion and confusion. And we're definitely not feeling our positive, optimistic selves. So this is the point in time where the moon is going to go void. Of course, while the moon is void, the moon in Sag energy going to make a positive interaction with the sun in Libra energy. And of course, when the sun and the moon are coming together, there's going to be an aha moment emotional awareness of what we want, what we need, what we desire, what we have to do, what we have to pursue in order to get through this adjustment period. So we have the moon in Sag, a fire energy. We have the sun in Libra, an air energy, sparking a new level of inspiration, of excitement, of creativity, trying to figure out, especially coming out of that funkiness, out of that confusion and delusion, what we actually have power and control over. And at this particular juncture, 301 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Jupiter is going to go retrograde. Very interesting that Jupiter, who rules over the Sag energy, chooses to go retrograde at the final degree of the Sag energy that the moon is currently in. We have the moon in the Sag energy at 457 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, making a positive interaction with Pluto. We know that the moon in Sag is at the final degree of Sag energy because Pluto, the great transformer himself, is retrograde at 29 degrees in Capricorn energy. Lucky for us, this is a positive interaction, which means that there is a major shift in our mood, in our attitude, in our perspective, we're bossing up. We see the ability to take power and control over our emotions, over our mind space, and therefore over our physical realm. 5.39 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon shifts into Capricorn energy. We sit in this for a couple of hours because at 9.05 a.m. we have our very first moon and Capricorn aspect, which interestingly enough is a positive interaction with its ruler, Saturn, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, discipline, who of course is retrograde in Pisces energy, thus why we're in and ending in a closure chapter. We're wrapping things up. This is a 30 year cycle that Mr. Saturn is trying to bring to a close. And of course, putting us in a situation while retrograde to realize where it is in our inner realm, we got to boss up, we got to do better, we got to be better, we have to have more willpower and discipline in order to deal with life as it is not for the way that we wished it would be clear the gunk clear the junk out of our physical realms. A lot of this is examining our physical realms, where it is that we're no longer resonating with people, places and things that the old version of self had brought in and created a lot to do with the belief system, where we were at, what we believe we were actually worthy of, what we believe we actually deserved. Of course, this new version of self has a much higher self-confidence, self-esteem, self-love area and arena within themselves. And so we have to shift our belief system. What we believe is actually true, what we believe we deserve, what we believe we're actually worthy of. So the moon interacting with Saturn, its ruler, this is an interesting dynamic for us to take a more realistic, more serious, more somber approach to what we have to do. Again, to-do list. When the moon is in Capricorn energy, we prefer to keep ourselves busy. 
with the physical realm tasks and chores so that we don't lose ourselves in the depth of our emotions that are definitely asking for our time, energy and attention. And so this is going to put us in a little bit of an authoritative state, if you will, for us to kind of take a good look at our lives, take a good look at the list, take a good look at what needs to be done and actually restructure our thoughts, our ideas, our emotions on again, the ending, the closures that need to take place before we can have the space to start building towards something new. The moon and Capricorn then going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener who is retrograde in Taurus energy. I love this because in a positive aspect, Uranus gives us an aha moment, gives us a light bulb moment. We start to begin to see things from a different lens, from a different perspective, from a different set of eyes. And again, Uranus being retrograde in this Taurus energy is supposed to illuminate for us where it is that we're holding on to the old to what we've built, what we created, what we've brought to life that we're no longer a vibrational match for. Why are we holding on to the old when we want to actively be starting to build towards the new? Well, it's because we don't have the faith, the trust in the cosmos and the universe and ourselves to actually see better things come along to take the place of the things that we know that we need to close the door upon and get rid of. So this is like an emotional pivot this is like new insight. Suddenly we're able to see where it is that we're the problem. We're blocking the progress. We're blocking the path and being able to move on and move forward. But this particular energy, this observational energy is going to put us in a totally different perspective to see where it is that again, in our physical realm, certain people, places and things have got to go. The moon is then going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in Scorpio energy. Now, we love Capricorn and Scorpio energy working together, even if it doesn't feel so good. What Capricorn and Scorpio energy does is it allows us to have a certain amount of growth. When you take the water from Scorpio energy and you water the earth of Capricorn energy, something is going to grow. Because this is a semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict, before something can grow, there's going to be some dirt, there's going to be some mud, there's going to be some emotion. Of course, Venus in the Scorpio energy, she's going through the emotions of her current situation and circumstances, trying to figure out what needs to die, what needs to go, what needs to be born, what needs to grow. We are getting in tune with new passions, new desires, with where it is that we need to make a major pivot in our physical realm. So of course, Venus wants to bring in the emotion. And the moon, who is our emotions in this Capricorn energy, we don't really want to dabble in emotions. We want to do. We don't want to feel. So this is going to illuminate for us where it is that we're feeling this inner conflict, this inner war taking over within us. Part of us is really focused on what is on our to-do list to bring to an end, to bring to a close. And part of us wants to focus on what we can actually have power and control over, what we can initiate, what we can give birth to, what we can bring to life. So of course, where Venus is involved, there's going to be a lot of topics and themes around our long-term passions and desires where relationships and money matters are concerned. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. Mercury, of course, is in Libra energy and air sign. We have Capricorn energy and earth sign. They're the furthest elements away. But this is a positive interaction, which means that we're starting to focus on the areas of life that have been out of whack, out of the balance that, of course, we're in Libra season, we're trying to achieve. Now, emotionally speaking, we have a very grounded approach to what needs to stay and what needs to go. Mercury, on the other hand, and Libra energy, we're tipping those scales back and forth, trying to find a sweet spot. We're not going to come to a decision point, to a choice point under this Libra influence. However, the moon being our heart space and Mercury being our head space, they're working together to kind of see where it is that we could bring certain topics and themes into balance, meaning emotionally, the to-do list is very long. Mentally speaking, we're undecided. We're back and forth. We're up and down. We're kind of all over the place. But we also have the ability to kind of get our heart and our head on the same page here. We may not be able to make a choice point or a decision at this particular juncture, but we are leaning towards one path, one option, one opportunity over the other. 
The moon is going to wrap the day up at 5.57 p.m. and again, Eastern Standard Time by getting into the boxing ring and squaring off with the North Node. So the North Node is in Aries energy trying to show us the path that we need to get on in order to reach our soul's mission, our soul's potential, where it is that we need to grow and learn and heal different things in order to get through this awkward period of adjustment. A square is going to highlight the growing pains. And again, we're also building towards this first quarter moon, which is an action point, a decision point, an epiphany point on what we need to do from here. And so the moon getting into the boxing ring with this north node is definitely putting us in a situation where we're not really willing to think that far in advance, that far into the future, because we have too much on our to-do list that we have power and control over now. The options, the possibilities, the variables of our future vision, they come, they go, they rapidly change. But the matter of fact of the circumstances that we're currently in here and now, we need a little bit more time. We need a little bit more work. We're in cleanup mode and we're definitely emotionally not ready to make the major changes that we need to make to kind of build the foundation, the structure that our future visions and dreams will be built upon. We have to focus our energy on demolishing and deconstructing the foundation, the structure that the old version of self has built.